the finance committee meeting for September 13th, 2022. Um, present here in the room, Jim Cambius, Beth Brown, Julie Chalfant, and then joining us online is Dave Sharp. Um, the others have conflicts and aren't able to join us this evening, but we do have a quorum, so we'll move on. So first item on the agenda is minutes review and approval. Uh, do you have a motion? I move that we approve the minutes for the meeting of August 30th as submitted. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? No. Uh, we have to have roll call vote since we're not all present. Jim Cambius? Aye. Beth Brown? Aye. Julie Chalfant? Aye. Dave Sharp? Aye. All right. That's unanimous. Um, next item is updates from other meetings. Um, I'm going to skip that. The next item is the debt report. So Dave, I emailed this to you. There's copies right there. Jim, I just did the first two pages um, up back. So do you want to present? Yeah, I don't have it in front of me. Sorry. But <laughs> is there an extra the, copy? There is. So this is what gets prepared um, for uh, reporting to uh, the Depart uh, Department of Local Services and DOR as we prepare for free cash uh, certification. And it just goes through what our balances were at the end of, uh, or at the beginning of the year, July 1 of 2021, what happened during the year and then what's still outstanding at the end of the year. So uh, the top section is long-term debt. And right now, the only long-term debt we have is for the garage. And uh, you can see there that our balance at the end of the year was 2,940,000. The interest we paid during the year was 105,350. And then, so, so there's a section for long-term debt inside the debt limit and long-term debt outside the debt limit. That's where we have, if we have debt in excess of 40 million and um, DOR has authorized it, we would have something in that second section, but we don't. So then if you go to the second page, uh, that top section on the second page is our short-term debt. So we had um, sewer phase one. At the beginning of July, we had a debt of 9,350,000. We paid that off in June of this year. So at the end of this year, we took out a new short-term loan, one-year ban of 15,761,000. Total interest paid, on that loan was 132,068.75. And that was split between the wastewater treatment plant, um, the taxpayers, and some of it was paid from the premium that we received on that ban. So that is the total total. Then the second line was the sewer clarifier, which uh, that was the, the loan balance on July 1. We paid off the entire loan and we actually paid that off in July of last year. So uh, it was just $175 worth of interest. Then the third one is the school roof, uh, which we are just doing bans until we get done with it. So it should take probably another two years to finish that off. I'm sorry, what's a ban? Uh, a bond anticipation note. Okay. So not a bond, but short-term borrowings to get us to our to our end. Um, we've generally, over the last few years, taken the um, approach that if the loan was a million or close to a million, just shortly over a million, we would do short-term bans instead of bonds because of the costs for bonding. You have bond counsel, you have legal, you have, you know, usually 
somewhere between twenty five and fifty thousand dollars worth of cost every time you bond. So if you can avoid that, we we do. So that's what we did with the school roof. Um, right now we have a outstanding balance on that of one hundred and sixty five thousand nine eighty six. We're paying that off um, through taxes of a hundred thousand each year. But in addition to that, we've been getting pledges from the schools and the nonprofits to help support that. So that helps us reduce that even faster. Um, so uh, that's where we're at with that. And then the last one there is the Oxford property. Um, <coughs> we now have a balance of 345965 And we just sold that property, I believe, for like Four hundred twelve thousand. I can't remember the exact amount, but we just sold the property. So uh, the town in April authorized me to um, pay off that loan with the proceeds, which I will do when the loan is due on October sixth. Huzzah! What's that? Hurrah! Yeah. <laughs> um, the last section is just a, a listing of our authorized and unissued debt. And we have, um, we had authorized a million dollars for the sewer clarifier, but we'd only used 900,000 initially when we first took out a loan for that. So we have 100,000 in unissued debt that we will rescind um, at this special town meeting coming up in October. So then we could just wipe that out of there. And then we have the phase one of the sewer for the 19 million of which we've borrowed the 15,761. So there is a certain amount unissued there, the 3,239. Plus we have the additional 3 million that uh, the town authorized and voted for um, as excluded debt uh, in April this year. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Can I ask a couple of, I'm sorry. I apologize if these questions you guys are all rolling your eyes about, uh, but just a quick um, for a new member here. So when you say short-term debt, what, what's that definition in terms of versus long-term debt? Is it just- Short-term uh, debt is generally um, any time, anything from 12 months and, and shorter. Okay, so it's a year and shorter. We've been taking out those bands, those bond anticipation yeah. notes for generally one year. Yeah. Um, Although with the sewer clarifier, we knew we wanted to pay it off right away. We took that out for just a month. And with the um, Oxford property, we, we were anticipating the sale. So we did just a six month ban on that one. Okay, that's great. So just a year or less. And then maybe this gets us in the weeds. So just tell me and we won't go there, but I'm just curious. Well, why did we get this extra 3 million when there was, as you say, 3.2 million sort of unused or unissued on the, on the sewer? phase or because um, there were a number of things that still needed to be done to complete phase two of the um, sewer project and I don't know Julie could probably speak to this better than I can but when we um, when we first went out to request money from USDA we were thinking just phase one and then some of phase two got rolled into that so it ended up being as uh, basically a 16 million dollar request through USDA, I think it was just to kind of keep things cut off where they needed to be cut off. But now to finish what they need to do, they needed about another six million to finish it. But we only had three million left out of that first authorization, so we asked for another three million to get us up to twenty-two million total for the entire phase one and phase two. Um, even so that, though there were a couple things that were still left out that we decided weren't important to finish, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. So that additional 3.2 is still going to get used. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's all. I have just a quick question. Why in the total line? I know you said we're going to rescind the 100,000, but why wouldn't it appear in this total line here? Why wouldn't it what? Appear here? Like why? So we have the 100,000. Oh, it does. So, so the clarifier, yeah. when we first took out the very first loan for the clarifier, oh, it was the previous I year. I was looking at something else. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Okay. I was looking at the wrong line. Got it. Um, there's also something about 
You can do ban year after year after year, but if you're going to be beyond 10 years, then you're committed to go to long term. Is that true? Or That's no? correct. Okay. And also, if you go beyond year three, you have a certain amount that has to be paid down every year, which is why we had a small amount that we paid down on the Oxford property because it was required. Uh, okay. After at year three, you're required to start paying down a certain portion. Uh, it's, it's minimal. It was like $12,800 that we had to pay down on that. Interesting. And that's what I budgeted for this year, too, just in case that sale didn't go through. It's lucky at $12,000. Yes, we have $12,000 for free <laughs> cash next year. <laughs> definite. But it, but it has definitely gone through. I mean, contract signed, all that. Yep, all money's right. in hand. All right. Yep. Weird. All right. Any other questions on outstanding debt? Nope. Thank you very much for um, updating us on that. Um, so now we're back to financial policies. Um, does anybody still have their copy from last time? I do. Does anybody not have our copy from last time? So, okay. um, I can, Dave, do you have a copy? I can share it. Uh, assuming I can find it. I think we ended on, on we were going to go over financial. Section four, financial reserves, reserves is where great. we are. Um, let's see if I can share this. All right. I can see because this is in the way. So I did update it with the changes that we talked about last time. And Brenda has pointed out a mistake I made when I did that. So I will correct that. Um, but we might as well just go ahead and forward with the financial policy. So the goal, Trevor, is we're going to go through it and get a set of financial policies that the whole finance committee agrees on. And then we'll present it to the select board and hopefully get select board buy in on it and then everybody will sign it and then we'll have a set of policies going forward that are not law, they're policy that we can then use to guide our budgeting. All right, so section four is financial reserves. Um, the first little paragraph there, purpose is just, um, I can probably make this bigger, can I? Yeah, um, it's just kind of introduction. Big enough for me if that's what you have. There, that's a little better, yeah? Yeah, that looks much better. Basis. Okay. Um, so the first section there is just sort of what, why we want to have reserves, just kind of stabilize operations and stuff. Um, so then we get into the policy and then we go through and name the different types of reserves that we have. So we have free cash, we have stabilization funds, which are a general stabilization fund and a capital stabilization fund and the SCEMS rent stabilization fund. Then we have retained earnings, the reserve fund and overlay surplus. So the first set free cash is just if you don't spend everything that you had appropriated last year, that goes into it. And if you take in more than you had estimated for, that goes into it. And that's sort of the, the balance of everything you did last year, plus what you rolled over from the year before becomes your free cash. For the most part, yes. Is that? That's, I mean, that's vaguely. <laughs> that's a very simple, simplified, but yes. Okay. Um, so in here, we say, that we're gonna set a year to year goal for free cash certification in the range of five to 8% of the previous year's annual general fund budget. And I've forgotten, did we mean that or did we mean net? Um, you guys have this sheet also? I believe these are the... Um, um, Annual general, general fund budget. Yeah. 
Yes. So if you go down on the little handout. Maybe the fourth little batch up from the bottom, you see where it says certified free cash. We can see what we certified over the past few years and what percent of our budget that is. Um, so and if you remember last time we were talking, we have, we have our total budget. And then if we, um, we have our general fund operating budget and then most of the things we're doing net debt. So we subtract out our debt service and that's the number that we're comparing to. Um, so if you look over the past several years, our certified free cash has been between seven and right. yeah, so it was pretty high back a ways, um, so 2018, 2017. I'm wondering if perhaps that five to eight uh, figure should be raised to five to 10 in the policy. What's, what's the, um, I mean, aren't we sort of saying that we're asking for people to submit budgets that we are now saying we want them to, we, we're hoping that they uh, are off by five to eight or 10%. Is that, that, I mean, isn't that what you're saying, sort of? So that no, it, yeah. no, not okay. necessarily. Um, because the, the formula includes um, what we take in for revenues in excess of what we budget. Right. What we don't spend that we're turning back, plus whatever we left in pre-cash the year before. That's kind of a generalization of it because then there's a, a revenue balance or excuse me, tax receivable balances that are figured into that as well, but that's a minimal part of it. So, so we're, we're hoping that there will be some money turned back. And this year, I think it was, I think in the end, it was like 280,000 that we turned back that we didn't carry forward into fiscal 23. So uh, I was looking at the documents uh, Julie sent us about um, the, the, um, the, this year's um, revenue and how, how much it had exceeded our estimates. And I think that's where most of this comes from is simply we, we lowball the estimated income because you don't want to be overly optimistic. And then, you know, you want to be conservative. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you know, that's perfectly prudent. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. But that's I think it's not that the departments are deliberately overestimating their requirements. It's that we're underestimating the revenues, which is a good idea, in my opinion. Right. Well, well it's partially I... by policy. And yeah. then it's also like, if you don't have enough money coming in and you have to borrow money to cover your expenses, yeah. that's really bad, right? right. Yeah. Like right. it hits you in your bond rating and your all sorts of stuff. Right, so department heads want to budget for what they think could happen and should happen but sometimes that doesn't, not all the projects they wanna do get, get done, um, but they wanna make sure that they're covered because they don't wanna be um, asking for transfers any more than they have to because they know that our, our resources are limited. Does that make sense? And the transfers are only acceptable in What's the garbage? Unanticipated and something. So if there's something they could have anticipated. Right. They Un unforeseen as far as the reserve fund. But then come May through July 15th, we can then transfer between appropriations if there's excess in one appropriation and shortage in another. So it kind of gives you a little leeway there also, but you know, you don't want to under budget by a hundred thousand um, and then have to try to figure out where that money's going to come from. So we're trying to decide what number to put in here. Yep. <clears throat> so does this send us? Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, I think 
personally, I think five to eight percent is reasonable. And, and the reason I think that is because we're trying not to have so much free cash. We're trying to, to budget conservatively, but um, in some of the past years, the, um, the focus of the finance committee was to keep a lot of free cash back and not use it. So we were saving 400 to 500,000 back if you and, and in the past few years, we've been using that more effectively to the point that we're not leaving so much on the table. So the free cash shouldn't be so high or shouldn't be shouldn't be a million six or a million nine. Let's put it that way. If I remember, that was also one of the justifications for establishing the I'm forgetting the name of the fund, but it's basically the emergency cash fund that we have been paying the stabilization, about stabilization fund. fund. Yeah. That that was one of the reasons for that is that that would take the place of running a heavy free cash. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yep. And if I remember right, it was the year that we had a million nine that we decided to put some money, start to put some money aside in uh, capital stabilization at Skip's, Skip's request. What's that? I said that that jive with the numbers. Yeah. <laughs> the drop drop, yeah. Um, what I was asking is what does this number oh yeah who, who is this number guiding? Is it us or the departments? Us when we us and the select board when we get to the end of the budget period and we're looking at how much we leave in free cash. that guides it, but it's something we don't figure out. Like we won't figure out until free cash is certified. So it's a backward looking thing. We say, oh, we hosed up last year. <laughs> is kind of what we're gonna say. It's like, oh, it was too low, but it, we, it gives us feedback for the, the next year about how much we should leave right there. And, and this year uh, we're looking at a, a little over a million that, that we should be seeing in free cash. Um, if if that I, um you said a million ninety was that the number well it was a million ninety if we got everything but we're waiting for some money from eversource to cover a shortage on a grant and i don't know that that's going to come in so you have to take fifty seven thousand out of that so So that would be a million would be six percent of the total budget, general operating fund budget, not the net of debt. The fifteen nine oh five. Sixteen six ninety nine oh eight. Oh, it'd be of the fifteen nine oh five. Oh, I divided by the wrong right. number. Point three. So it seems like we're trending into the five to me. Yes. Yeah. It does, doesn't it? Because I know I know there's always been a complaint that we have way too much free yeah. cash and then it causes a spending spree and you know all this. Well, why not why not budget more appropriately? We've been a lot more conservative on the I actually, actually, I've been, I've been a little more aggressive yeah. with, yeah, right, a little more aggressive, maybe, maybe more sometimes than I'm comfortable with, but, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're happy with five to eight. Okay. I think so. Yeah. All right, Dave's nodding too. Um, then the next line says budget decision makers will avoid fully depleting the town's free cash in any year, but we don't put an amount there. And that was right. so that we can just kind of argue with each other every year. Um, <laughs> and then yeah. it says we will try to limit use of free cash to one time expenditures. And that's something that we say earlier in this document also. Yeah. But um, 
And then we will appropriate any excess above 5% of the annual budget to build reserves or to offset unfunded liabilities. So the way that would work would be how either at the special town meeting or at annual town meeting the following year, we would use some of our free cash, which we always do. Right. When we say excess, excess above 5%, we don't leave 5% laying there at the end of the year, though. No. It doesn't say no, we have it, to it's... leave five. It says we have to use at least right. anything above five. Yeah, is it, this is just saying anything in excess of 5% should be used to build reserves or to offset unfunded liability. So we're talking about um, stabilization funds and um, OPEP. Correct. Yeah, I was going to. I was going to ask the same question because I have a feeling everyone else is going to ask that question as well. Is why not include capital we're paying off debt? I mean, so I mean, I was thinking, you know, using it to pay down principal. Because I know that people will suggest that. <laughs> oh well, no, not if it's if it's excluded debt. There would be no reason to do that. Except in the but, sense of we've but, got the money. Well, I'm I'm just saying, you know, we have so many projects to take on. I I I guess I I don't see us paying down debt when we have so many things that need to be purchased. Okay. So you feel and, like it would be Yeah, that'd be my thought. But better to use it on things so that we don't have to borrow money rather than- Right, to pay exactly, money. yeah. But this says any excess above 5% will go to build reserves or offset unfunded liabilities. Right, so they're saying only 5%, this, this is basically saying only 5% um, 5% of our general fund operating budget free cash mm -hmm. can be used to cover stems out of district, the reserve fund, all those kinds of things. And anything above that should be used to put into stabilization or into OPEB, right? I mean, that's, that's the way I read this. Is that what you're reading? And maybe that's too lofty it is. of a goal. I'm not sure. Um... That's what we want. Okay. Can I just ask a practical question of how this works and make sure I'm following the conversation? So free cash is something that up through the end of the fiscal year, you're kind of keeping tabs on. But then we have this sort of demarcation about free cash that you're using at the end of the fiscal year to kind of, oh, we have it, we can spend some things. But now you're also talking about an amount of free cash that you're putting over to the next fiscal year as well, right? Mm -hmm. so, I, so I'm not clear where you're when you're talking about this five percent. Is it at so, which point? So we have free cash that gets certified as of July one, and that's usually certified in let's say September. Okay. Yeah. We have free cash that we can use between now and June 30, and on June 30, it basically goes away, and we start all over and get a new free cash certified. So what it's saying is out of that new free cash certification, 5% of the general operating budget portion of that, 5% could be used for whatever we need to spend it on, but, there, but it's saying that anything above 5% should go into stabilization or go into unfunded liabilities. Which is OPEB or pension. Right. Right? I, I, that's the way I read this. And I, 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 was that your intent when you put it together? That was what was I already think, there. I just copied well, what and, was and there. Think, so, well, yeah, I, I had to say, you and I that. talked about it and we, we thought we did. that made sense at the time. But, you know, talking about it now, it, it does seem awfully lofty considering that we're still using free cash to support operating items. We haven't gotten to that point where we can pay for scams out of um, taxes and local receipts. 
Maybe just delete that section. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. <coughs> Put a period after the emergencies, parentheses, period. Okay. Yes. Well, in fact, remove the parentheses. Or maybe, maybe in, in the parentheses, put uh -huh. the unfunded liabilities and the reserves within that. Funding one time expenditures, build reserves and offset. Okay. Or building reserves and offsetting unfunded liabilities, one time expenditures? No, those are like. I didn't quite okay. catch what you were saying there, but. The parentheses have one-time expenditures in it. Uh, it is the bill reserves and offset on the liabilities. Would that be adequate? So we would do this. Fund one-time expenditures, comma, build reserves, comma, and support unfunded liabilities. Is that sound good? Yep. <clears throat> All right. Um, so that's it for free cash. The next <coughs> stabilization fund, which is a special fund set by law. Um, we have at the moment three stabilization funds? That's correct. The first one is the general stabilization fund. Mm -hmm. Which is like a rainy day fund. It's like yes. A, it's a, if you have flat out emergency and you can't pay your bills, then you can take money out of it. Right. And, and, and I, I believe I don't remember the amount, but I want to say, why do I think it was a million? It was right before I started, but there was a certain portion of that stabilization fund that got used to um, as a down payment on our on our garage. So it has been used in the past for large capital Correct. expenditures. Yes, when there was. And yeah, and considering that it's a general, the... it's pretty wide open to your interpretation and what you could what you want to spend it on. So what we put in here was that we will try to have at least 5% of the current general fund operating budget, including debt, in the general stabilization fund. Funds in excess of 5% may be used for down payment on large capital expenditures. And we have the numbers here. So if you look at the other sheet, we're at like 8.3% right now well, in 2021, which is the last time I had data. It's a little less than that right now, just because we had a loss in investment income this year, but. Any thoughts, discussion on that? No, that sounds good to me. Okay. Dave, anything? No, can, can you go down on the on the sheet? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. So this is <clears throat> there we go. So we're at this general stabilization fund. Oh, general, it's supposed to be 5% of general fund operating budget. So that's the 9% line or? Percent of total budget is the 8.3% line. So does that match this budget session? I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the other ones say general 
fund operating budget net of debt. So the way I was thinking about it is the general stabilization fund is if you can't pay your bills in your big emergency and your debt isn't gonna go away just because you're having an emergency, it's still an obligation that you have. So 5% of that whole amount, including debt, makes sense. Right. To me. I like the recommendation to specifically to you know plan to replenish it if it dips below. Okay, yeah, and then the next section says if it at no point should you get below two and a half percent. And if you're below 5%, you have to come up with a plan. So. Right. We're good with that. All right. Moving on. Capital stabilization fund. Um, so we have a special purpose stabilization fund for capital expenditures. Um, we can only use it for capital expenditures. Um, we will appropriate annually to this fund, it says. Um, oh, dear, sorry. And then this number, so we get a report every year. No, you calculate a report every year. The, um, the auditors keep track of our fixed assets okay. and, and the depreciation of our fixed assets. And that's what you're referring to is the depreciation amount, the annual depreciation amount right now is at about 1.5 million. And the amount we have in there right now is like 700,000, I believe, 700, 700 and some thousand. So we should be putting money into this account. Okay. And then the idea behind the account is you look at that and you look at your capital expenditures and you use it to. Right. I think if, if you remember right, we did use some last year. We did for the sidewalk repair. And I think it was like 150,000 that we took out of there. Right. Any thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. Looks good. Um, And then the last stabilization fund we have is the SCEMS rent stabilization fund. And the idea behind that is the rental payments that are provided to the town for Deerfield, 75%? Correct. 75% of the rental funds go into this rent stabilization fund. And that fund is available for fixing the building, basically. So, right. Okay. And we've spent out of it for the asphalt and the new exhaust system that's in the And so there's no amount associated with that other than the 75%, which is what's in our, I know we voted it at the town meeting. Is it? We did. It's we, not in the bylaws. It's just a something we voted. It was a vote at town meeting. Um, mm -hmm. Two years ago? I can't remember now. 2020, it says. So. Okay. And, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, what kind of money is, what kind of money does that generate then to help that building from the rent? Uh, we're talking not not very much. We're uh, thir uh, seventy five percent of thirty six thousand. So okay, <clears throat> so twenty seven thousand dollars annually. It's not a big amount, but we've already used fifty five thousand out of it. Um, <laughs> right, and and we've only completed one of those projects, and that was the parking lot. We still have the exhaust system to do, and I think we were waiting for that to make some progress on that. I I, I don't know for sure, but I I believe that was the case. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, and then, so nothing out on Skim's rent stabilization. Okay, so retained earnings. Um, so this is just within the enterprise funds, the way they're set up. They, if they have 
take in more than they spend, they have retained earnings, right? And right, right. It's they're operating kind of as a for-profit business. And so a for-profit business has retained earnings. So that's what that is. Just like our it's our undesignated fund balance. Just out of curiosity, do we does this happen? <laughs> do do wastewater and skims turn a profit, so to speak? Oh yes. Town? Yeah, and, and they need to. They should really have, I mean, because especially the wastewater treatment plant is self-supporting. Um, the town doesn't doesn't put any money into the wastewater treatment plant. So um, the object is to build those reserves each year so that we can start to pay that debt that we're going to be experiencing here mm -hmm. soon. And the idea of that about a year, close to a year worth of operating. Right. For the for the, at least for the wastewater plant. Right. And then on top of that, some extra money for, right, getting, getting ready to pay down the debts. Yeah. For sure. So right now we have about a million three hundred thousand in retained earnings for the wastewater treatment plant. And that's with using some to pay down the debt we've already been paying. So I think that's great. We're, we're keeping stable on that. And then with, um, with South County EMS, um, usually it's between 400 and 600,000 that we have left. And then um, some of that gets used to support the budget. So then the assessment to each of the towns isn't quite so much. So just a small portion is kept back every year to um, anticipate the new ambulance that they're gonna need to buy here in a couple of years. And so we have in here the SCEMS retained earnings values targeted to the ambulance replacement schedule and the wastewater treatment plant should cover, like you said, Trevor, one year of operating expenses. All right. The next one is the reserve fund. This is funding that the finance committee um, controls in order to pay for emergency or unforeseen expenditures. Um, Instead of putting in a dollar value, we put in an amount between 0.5 and 0.75. It's been $100,000 for years and years, um, which is in that range. So, mm -hmm. um, wow, has that, it been 100,000 that many years? Apparently. Oh, okay. Because I know at one point in time it was 80,000 and then we increased it to 100, but I just thought it was like the last four or five years that we did that. Oh, I don't know. I know. We don't, I, yeah. we haven't come close to spending it. Last year we spent a lot of it, yeah. but. Um, we did, and, and we might again this year with the things that we've got coming up. Well, no, because some of that will be on the special town meeting and we'll use free cash for it. But, um, but we have such a, uh, an opportunity now with, with the new uh, municipal law to use other appropriations to support shortages in some of the appropriations that it isn't, doesn't make it necessary to use reserve funds for all of that. <coughs> and then this just says the process. So requests should go to the town accountant who sends them, who reviews them and sends them to us. Um, there is a form and you should, if possible, ask in advance of the expected in expenditure. You know, if there's an emergency, you don't know about, you can't. But um, and then it says that we cannot approve a transfer request for something that town meeting has not approved, has has disapproved. <laughs> I guess is a better way to put that. Um, and then the last one is overlay surplus. That's something that the assessors control, and that is. Um, funds that are set aside to cover property tax abatements and exemptions and stuff that come up. Um, and they can law change on that also, and they can roll that over from year to year. So they don't ask for a plus up very often. Correct. Yes. And so it's much more manageable and it's much less likely that we'll have surplus or when we do have surplus, it'll be small. Maybe a question. Yeah, just I'm sorry, going back to that last sentence that you just sort of clarify, but it is confusing. Um, it does make it sound like you can't get the money 
unless it's for a purpose that's been approved by the town. But I think what you just said is what it really is trying to say is you can't get money for a purpose that the town has voted against. Right. So Correct. what it says is a purpose that has been placed before town meeting and not approved. So it's only something that town meeting has specifically turned down is, is not eligible for reserve fund. Right. So, so basically the reserve fund can be used for existing appropriations. You can't create a brand new appropriation to use a reserve fund for unless it's emergency spending that you've gotten approval from DOR for. Well, and I think it's just, you know, <laughs> solidly, you know, democratic principles to not let the town spend money on things that the town has decided not to spend money on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I totally agree with that. I'm just, I just. Just to clarify not, the language. I, do, do you clear. think the language is clear, the way it's written? Um, it, it's all legal training. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Except it's been a long day. Um, <laughs> um, it just it's that issue of it being um, voted against that seems to be not coming through here to me it seems like you you can't get any money unless it's been specifically approved by the town but that's you know some man, uh, town manager might come and ask for, I mean I think we all understand what it means but somebody down the road maybe doesn't but they you know is somebody in the finance committee going to say oh has that been approved by the town? And, and what we're and, and it doesn't need to be something that's already been approved by the town. It just needs to be. It, we just this is just a stopgap to make sure someone's not trying to get around a, a disallowing vote. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Things that have been not approved. You can't right. get it for something that's been not approved. If no one's commented on it at all, yeah. Then it's fair game. Then it's fair game. <laughs> Okay. Oh, that opens up all kinds of possibilities, doesn't it? Well, okay. You, you still can't create a new appropriation okay. with the reserve fund. It has to be an existing appropriation that you're that you're using the money for, unless it's emergency spending. Okay. Yeah. So, are you guys going to meet in the conference room? Is that okay? Yeah. And we can keep going. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, all right. I'm hoping we won't be much longer and disturbing you. <laughs> okay. Well, that works out. So then we can finish yeah. up. All right, so anything else on section four? So I didn't write down any changes. That took us quite a while, didn't it? <laughs> there was that. Um, oh, no, I did. Yeah, on that 4.1 section. Yeah. I did write a change there. Okay. Um, right. Yeah. So the last piece is pension and OPEB. Um, and it's, it just says that we will set up a plan to meet our obligation for to fully fund pension and OPEB for eligible current and future employees, retirees. Um, so the idea behind it is that when you hire somebody, you expect them to retire something and you set aside money now. So when they retire, it's already funded that you're not paying up till now we've done pay as you go. Right. So the pension liability is managed by the Franklin Regional Retirement. The there's a the uh, a legal requirement. The state has legislated that we will pay off that pay fully fund that liability by 2040. Um, Franklin Regional Retirement um, sets up the plan and we'll meet that. And right now we're we're expected to meet it in 2030 four or five it like year to year varies but so we're expected to meet it and we don't really have any control over it they just say pay us this much and we do so, so that's kind of you know whatever right um so that's sort of i mean it's two sentences very short but there's not really anything no wiggle room there so we might as well just do it well uh, casey has talked about the the fact that we can put more into it than what Franklin County Regional Retirement is, assesses us to build that faster. 
I, I don't know how important that is. If that's more important than the OPEB liability, I really don't know, but just just throwing it out there that I think that is an option and to pay some more towns, if we wanted to. Some towns do do that. Hmm. I kind of feel like if we're meeting the state legislated mandate. Yeah, right. what, and we have so many other needs. Yeah, it's just it's hard to put that money in, you know, especially when we're we're so sorely supporting OPEB. Um, yeah. Yeah. So the OPEB is different. There is a um, there is an amount that is estimated for OPEB, but there is no legislation that requires us to fund that by any given date yet. Um, it is noted on the, what do you call the bond rating? Bond rating. The bond rating. The bond rating. Um, that if you aren't um, funding your OPEB liability, they note that and say that your bond rating will improve if you do a better job of funding your OPEB liability. And, and that was a statement by our bonding agency this year when we were going out for the um, bond anticipation note for the um, wastewater treatment plan. So our policy has been that we will fund the liability at the rate of 4% of previous year costs. So whatever we paid in healthcare essentially total last insurance. year, mm -hmm. total insurance. We'll put 4% of that this year into our OPEB fund, um, which will take us kind of to eternity to um, <laughs> yes. fully fund that, but it's at least something. Um, yeah, because the, the, according to our actuarial, um, that's in the millions. I don't remember how many million, but they're saying our liability is in the millions and we're only putting 40,000 a year into it. So uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're not meeting that very well. Is there something we could be doing to improve that, allocate more money or? I'd say set a policy that allocates more money, yes, on a, on a yearly basis. Do we want to recommend anything higher in here? The comment went by last year. So last year we actually put less in than we did the year before because our insurance went down A little for some bit. reason. Well, I, um, I think, um, I, I can't speculate. I can't remember now what the reason was, but fewer people taking insurance. I, I mean, the, the, the policy that you've got here keeps talking about increasing the funding. The town will seek to increase, right? Yeah. And we recognize the funding rate must be increased to achieve full funding. But so are, are you asking now whether this should say something different or just that when it comes to budget time, we should be thinking about, or, or should this say funding? I'm just asking if this should say something different. Yeah. Uh, I, you know what, I know why it went down for fiscal 23, partly because um, the school didn't fill some positions that were, were left yeah. open. And I think because of that, there were fewer people taking insurance at the school. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to remember if that okay. room was open. <laughs> Well, I just, I saw an email here a couple minutes ago for a severe um, thunderstorm warning for Northwestern Franklin County. Need the rain. Yes. <laughs> All right. And then the very last paragraph just says that we will look at healthcare cost containment measurements and try and mitigate the liability. Mother would not buy kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, uh, in regards to the OPEP, 
policy, you know, maybe it'd be interesting to see what some of the other towns have. You know, I, some of these towns are putting away hundreds of thousands every year. Uh, we can't do that. Um, but we could certainly increase what we have, and maybe it's even just to increase that to 8% of last year's liability, or 10% of last year's liability would certainly help. Um. I guess one other point is that the wastewater treatment plant and SCEMS OPEB is funded at the same rate as the general town employees because once those folks retire, we pay their um, their retirement. Right. And that's built into the indirect costs that we charge them. I, I'm pretty sure the other towns around us pay more than the 4%. Do you, do you I know, feel like I've heard that? I don't know the answer to that. That's a good suggestion. Okay. So I'm feeling like we're leaving it at 4% for now and checking what other towns are doing. Okay, that's the end of the financial policies. The rest is just a list of references. Well, you have at the very, very back, you have forecasting and budgeting six. Points. No, that was an accident. Oh, okay. Because um, we already did that. That I was, was I section thought, one. I thought yeah. so. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Yeah, I was confused by that. Yeah. Sorry about that. Great. No, I mean, it's not, not like we're confused about that. Okay. So I guess going forward with these, I'll incorporate the changes and then we'll board it to the select board and maybe try and set up a time to go and present it to the select board. Um, when were you thinking, when were you thinking of doing that? I don't know. I, I think we'll probably ask Casey when they have time to look at it. I don't know what their schedule is like between now and the special town meeting, if they would even have time right. before that. Um, It'd be nice to get it done this fall before budget season starts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was sort of the plan. Yeah. Um, so I guess I have an action item that include the changes that we had. Does anybody have any remarks on the changes we had from before? Can they look at them? Or... I. Um have made some stylistic notes and I will send you a markup of the okay. current. Okay. Draft. And I just had that one, but I, I didn't get very far in really looking. I, I just started okay. to look this afternoon. Maybe what we'll do, we have a meeting on September 27th. Yeah, I was going to say, we'll so, probably look at it one last time yeah. and make sure that all the changes we wanted are incorporated. Are incorporated. And, yep. Uh, so... I'll smooth it up with whatever, if you send me whatever inputs, I'll smooth it up and then send it out to the group. And then we'll look at it again on the 27th. And then we'll ask Casey when to select. And on the 27th, I think our meeting changes to 6 p.m. Yeah. Yep. Somebody had a conflict earlier. I, don't know. I, think so. I, will, I won't be there. Huh? I, I won't be there. You will? I won't, 27. Won't. Okay. So if you have, um, I'll send out the smooth version as soon as I can. And if um, you have any more inputs, just send them to me. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that's it. So the other thing I had was what we, we started talking about at the very beginning is that thinking of ways to present debt information to a large group of people who don't sit through all of our meetings and live all of this. Um, I don't feel like it's a good use of committee time um, yet. So maybe I'll, I'll come bug you and waste all your time. Oh, okay, great. And, um, Give me another week. Just yeah, so yeah, I can yeah. get caught up and then we'll be good to go. Um, sometime <laughs> before the 27th. I do think every time I leave here, 
that I've learned a lot and that seems like everyone should learn about this. Yeah. <laughs> and I think about the, the, this, this point, in fact, it's like the one that's most on my mind when we leave here. Like, oh, how can we share this information with the people who live in our town? Yeah. I don't have an answer for you. But yeah, I'm I think you give information out to people beyond, I mean, like, word of mouth, Facebook, and handing out. Info sheets at town meeting, except yep. that you know that means that they have to get up themselves up to speed while they're finding a seat. Right. I think if we had something kind of compact to hand out, like if I could like have something to hold on to, I mean, this isn't a great way, but I do think like it could be disseminated like almost casually, you know, it's not a very good form for like long term, but you know, it's like I do talk to people about this. And it's like, oh, I wish I had something to just like hand to you, kind of thing. Yeah. Maybe I we could take, well, we different, take, take different subjects last year. Right. So yeah. if we did something like that. Yeah. I was thinking something a little more condensed, but just about um, kind of like the the debt, you know, that we've been talking about. Okay. Well, given that we're going to be borrowing a whole lot of money. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> might be appreciated at the town meeting to just get up and explain how this works and the difference between short term and long term borrowing and right. <laughs> it seems like it needs to be done ahead of time though because that by the time they're at the town meeting they're pretty set on what they're planning to do. Right. Well a Zoom meeting which would you know attract people who are already informed and interested. Yeah. <laughs> But if we did print it up a brochure, we could put it here, but we put it in the library and maybe send it home to elementary school or something. Try to get it be, out to people. There's nice. always people over here at the at the table taking pamphlets. Yeah. It's like yeah. it's like they're obsessed with taking pamphlets. I don't know whether they actually read them or not, but What's that? I was thinking of like, I'm glad I never did that. Um, oh my gosh, yeah. Yes. Which I never do. This is like the first time I've ever been on a here. Yeah. I'm thinking I might have to do some more work before I go home because yeah. I don't want to walk out on this. <laughs> Why should we wrap up the meeting? It's part of the meeting. But Dave isn't outside, so he doesn't have to worry about it. <laughs> okay. Um, I like a brochure idea. Just, I mean, that's my preference because I'm a, I like to hold and read. And, and I think Yes, it's it's more. I don't know what the correct term is, but it's it it doesn't require people to make as much of an effort to get, like going to a web page or signing onto a right, meeting. Right. Yeah. It's just here. Here's a brochure. And it feels a little less like you're forcing maybe an idea out of this, which I wasn't trying. I'm not trying to do, but I was just like, but that they can read it at their own leisure. Yes, having that in it well in advance. It senior center. Oh my, you'd have it all. We covered. would get a pretty good percentage. We would. If you really want coverage, pass them out at the dump on Saturday. Oh, there you go. At the what? At, at, the, at dump. the dump. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I think we're ready to adjourn. Anybody like to move? I move that we adjourn. I second. All right. Uh, we'll Aye. Uh, Julie Chalk and I, David Sharp. Aye. All right, we are adjourned. It's unanimous. All right. <laughs>